of our strategic fields to invest. So it's a pleasure to have uh, Nikolai today, our uh, managing partner consulting, who will share our climate strategy. Um, and then I, I'm happy to take you on our roadmap to, um, um, to create transparency into our carbon footprint. As a highlight, Christoph and myself will give you a quick demo into our solution. And uh, Christoph, many thank you to having you today. Christoph is responsible for um, the platform business at Salesforce. So I really uh, welcome our friends from Salesforce today. Um, and afterwards, Lars, our offering, for, offering lead for sustainability, will give you an overview of how we support our clients on their sustainability roadmap. Please raise your questions uh, through the Q&A section. We will try to respond them via chat um, or at the end of the session. Let's quickly recap why carbon, the carbon footprint is so important for all of us before we start. Um, climate change is already having um, immense impact to our natural human and economic uh, world. And we are at the tipping point to decide in which future we want to live in. Since the Industrial Revolution, um, our global emissions have grown rapidly about 10 times over the last uh, 100 years than before. And if we continue to live our life like we do today, um, we will see shrinking glaciers, rising uh, sea levels by maybe a half to one and a half meters, we will see wildfire increases by two and a half times or even two to five times more uh, extreme wild, um, uh, rainfalls or even a drop uh, of global GDP by 45%. Um, I don't think I have to remind this uh, to all of us because we are uh, aware of those topics. But nevertheless, I think we need to act now to change the world for us and we at Deloitte, we are committed to lead by example and make an impact that matters. So Nikolai, why is that important uh, to Deloitte and how are we going to contribute? Thank you, Mike. Uh, thanks for the intro. And also thank you very much for actually setting up this webcast because I think one of the many steps that we all can do in jointly getting to net zero and jointly driving sustainability is actually exchanging know-how, ideas, uh, talking to each other, learning from each other. So even this webcast may create just a little value in all of us uh, achieving our goals. Now, um, it's called the climate strategy of Deloitte. Now, you may ask yourself, how boring is that, that Deloitte should be talking about their climate strategy? I mean, how, how about the climate strategy of a manufacturing client with big factories or energy intensive clients? What is interesting about the climate strategy of a services firm like Deloitte? We have 330,000 people around the globe and we are in a business of traveling, or at least we were in the business of traveling pre-corona. In 2019, Deloitte globally purchased the most airline tickets in the world. No company in the world purchased more airline tickets than Deloitte did. So the carbon footprint that we are leaving by our business model through 330,000 people traveling is immense. Another, another challenge we have, we have 330,000 people around the globe who are paying good salaries, who have average household incomes, and who are spending their money, their average household income on pleasure on buying a car, on traveling around the world. So we have 300,000 people with their own carbon footprint. And we believe we have a responsibility to change directly what we do and indirectly with working with our people, educating our people to change their behavior and then even extending this, and this is what you see on this slide here, um, on the Empower the Ecosystem, the responsibility to work together with other companies, other institutions, to change their behavior. We're doing this together with Salesforce. Thanks, friends of Salesforce, for working together jointly on creating something. We are sometimes being asked uh, by people out there, by the press and so on, are you better than your competitors? Are you worse than your competitors? We don't care. We work together 
with the people and the, the other companies in our market exchanging ideas to become better. Because I think this should be the overall ambition for all of us is not working against each other, but jointly for a joint goal. Now, being a bit more specific, cut emissions. I, I told you we are traveling a lot. We were traveling a lot by Corona. Actually, I have to say, thanks to Corona, we learned quite a bit in the past 12 months. Because in record time, we were able to turn our business in the business of not traveling, but actually getting together on Zoom calls. Pre-corona, I was invited in my role as CEO of consulting to join meetings, 18-hour meetings in New York, just fly in, fly out, maybe spend one day in, in New York in, in the hotel room, but uh, fly back immediately. Have trips like from New York and then go to Shanghai and then go back to Berlin and then to Hamburg or by plane just to meet a few people. We have learned now this is not necessary. We can work intensively through Zoom. So we, it sounds like a small thing. We just decided for this fiscal year, which uh, just decided as part of us, on a meeting policy. There will be no global meetings like this anymore at Deloitte. Each of our institutions is allowed to have one global meeting, not 12. So we're cutting down drastically on meetings. We are very operatively on, on giving guidelines on how to travel. In Germany, we used to have people flying from Frankfurt to Düsseldorf, flying from Nuremberg to Frankfurt. It's just not allowed anymore. We have company cars. We just changed our company car policy. This all may seem like small things, but in the end, all these small things make a big impact. However, and that's the right side of the slide, I believe the strongest impact we can all get is by enabling our people, educating them, nudging them, to be more sustainable. And then when we work with, work with our clients, with our partners on finding solutions jointly. So how do we help our clients become sustainable? How do we help actually the German government and institutions to see a way, a path uh, to sustainability? This is our, uh, our, uh, our responsibility that we see. If we play all these four levels that you see in here, we are very confident we cannot only achieve net zero for ourselves, but actually help a lot of others to achieve net zero because we all need to work together. Now, there's this consultant saying, what gets measured gets done. So one of the actions we took is say, we got to measure what we're doing because only if we see basically in numbers, in graphs, how successful we are actually, if we are achieving our goals, only then we can see whether we have to be even more intensive and uh, where we need to change. And that's why we looked at the sustainability cloud and said, well, that's some, uh, an instrument that can actually help us to become more sustainable. It will lead me over to handing over back to Mike and to Christoph, explaining a little bit about the sustainability cloud by Salesforce. You probably need to unmute yourself. Thank you, as always. <laughs> we still have the mugs here. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Nikolai, uh, for your dedication as well as your sponsorship for our initiative. As Nikolai mentioned, we at Deloitte have decided to leverage Salesforce Sustainability Cloud to consolidate and harmonize um, our uh, different emission types and data sources to get a consolidated carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main goals that we are achieving and trying to achieve with this solution, but also obviously to get a more frequent updates to us um, to be able to manage and steer upon our goals. And obviously we are working on to get uh, monthly updates into our system from all the different systems that we have. And I think that's already uh, a big challenge that you can think of in, a, in such a project um, with all the disparate uh, source systems that you have uh, to consolidate them, to bring them together and to obviously get a consistent view on your carbon footprint. And in our case, uh, really get this also on a client and engagement level or project level, which is very important to us because obviously business travel is an important factor as Nikolai mm -hmm. mentioned. And uh, this will really allow us or specifically the responsible people in the projects to steer upon our goals that we want to achieve. And what we have seen as well is that one of the challenges throughout um, this project is to educate the people, to educate the people on 
why is this important? Um, how do they contribute? And what are typical levers that they can take to uh, reduce our carbon footprint? And there is on the one hand clearly our uh, um, rules and uh, um, tra travel policies, etc., that we bring in, which we need to educate the people upon. But I think that the main topic is really to explain them already what means a carbon footprint, what is tons of carbon dioxide meaning for us, and how do the, does this translate into their daily business? How can they consider it? And how can we obviously implement um, um, incentives to measure upon? Now, when we start and give you an insight where we are of today, um, we obviously started with a minimum viable product where we uh, uploaded the data from all the different data sources manually into the Salesforce Sustainability Cloud, and obviously tried to um, support with a system what we already do um, over the last couple of years with our uh, uh, sustainability team, and where we report to our, our global uh, uh, um, carbon balance sheet and um, and obviously we require to analyze the different data sources that we have and we focus mainly on emission types like scope one two and specifically business travel because this is one of our main factors in the first step and um, also aligned on accounting rules and balance concepts to make sure we have a consistent view which is in line with our global rules um, and we obviously started the solution, we upload this on a regular basis at this moment manually because we really wanted to involve the different contributors and stakeholders as early as possible to on the one hand learn, um, do they understand it, do they really understand what's their impact and how they can act, but also get their feedback on how they can leverage what would help them to obviously um, use this throughout the projects. And um, we are currently uh, we are right now in a process where we um, automate the different data sources from our, uh, um, to get the data from our uh, um, energy uh, providers, from uh, the different buildings, from our uh, travel applications, uh, etc. So there's all sorts of different solution, uh, um, source systems that we connect to and that we are trying to upload the data on a regular basis. And uh, for most of the data sources, we talk about a monthly level. And, and there is also data sources that or data that you have to still maintain manually, which you will see later on, because there are sm some smaller buildings where we don't have, for example, a automated update of our um, energy consumption. We get this typically at the year end. And uh, this doesn't really give us an understanding uh, to reduce uh, energy consumption as well. And then what we plan for right now is also to support our people with um, enablement for them. So we obviously started to build uh, e-learning sessions uh, where they obviously can educate themselves what, what is their impact, what is the impact in the project, what are typical uh, uh, leverages or levers that you can do in a project to support um, but also uh, create, created adoption KPIs and some incentives where we can um, measure the, people's, the people upon. And the plan is really to go into a next level where we benchmark projects together, where we calculate or present already um, uh, levers or options to reduce the carbon footprint in a specific project or in a specific situation. And that's where we obviously consolidate the different projects, match them, and try to find benchmarks where we can um, identify typical options uh, to reduce. It. But also, on the other end, to give them options to scenario planning of projects ahead of starting them to already be able to reduce the number of times we run onto customer sites and, and, and internal sessions and being able to get a feeling of what will be the carbon footprint if we do it this direction or another direction. And, and also we, we obviously look into integration of additional scope three emissions, specifically, for example, purchased goods and services, which is also an important topic for us to have a, a full view on this. Um, and then literally, we also want to motivate our people to challenge them with 
smaller uh, engagement with them based on specific project situations or alerts that we have in the system, which we can show you later. Now, having said that, um, I would like to hand over to Christoph to give us a quick introduction into our uh, demo scenario, and then uh, we will dig into that. So Christoph, thank you much. Thanks, uh, Mike. Um, so uh, as we just heard, Sales for Sustainability Cloud uh, enables the law to quickly track, analyze, and report reliable environmental data uh, to help them reduce their carbon emissions. The company's um, carbon footprint data is visualized in dynamic reports and dashboards. And that's not only for audit purposes or executive engagement, but also to manage and minimize the carbon footprint results within customer project engagements uh, from the Deloitte uh, consultant team. So this delivers insight insights that empower Deloitte to drive their climate action program at scale. Um, so we now will give you a short um, demo of Sustainability Cloud and focus on the following uh, three personas. First, um, there's Annika Climate. Uh, she's the head of sustainability and responsible uh, for collecting, tracking and preparing the carbon footprint data in a way that can be audited and that corporate can create and publish um, the global uh, Deloitte Sustainability Report. Then we will have uh, Thomas Colonia, um, a facility manager for Deloitte in Cologne, uh, who will support Annika in manually collecting the data which can't be automatically provided uh, by, for example, the energy providers. Um, and last, we have uh, Cindy Partner, uh, Deloitte Engagement Manager, uh, who uses a, a sustainability cloud to minimize the carbon footprint within her and her team's uh, customer engagements. Um, so uh, let's start with Annika, Mike. Um, why don't we we'll take a look into uh, how she experiences uh, sustainability cloud when she logs in? Yeah, thank you very much, Christoph, for the short introduction. So what you see here is the starting screen that Annika has in our uh, sustainability uh, environment. And having said that before, obviously this solution could resist completely separate as a separate sustainability solution. At Deloitte, we have decided uh, to obviously integrate this into our CRM application. Um, and the reason why that is because obviously our engagement partners, engagement managers then have access to the different customers and um, engagements that we have and see the information about the, their emissions right there. So it's obviously an integrated environment. Mm. Now, what you see here on the screen is there is uh, numerous information that um, Annika has on the right hand side, um, obviously typical elements like their, their own tasks that she maybe has to prepare a sustainability report for a client uh, or that uh, she is obviously have to approve specific carbon footprints that we have collected. So when we uh, have the data collected, reviewed, that she is obviously at the end approve it and the, the data is then um, in the system locked and uh, obviously frozen for our balance um, report. And in the middle, obviously, you see the, um, a dashboard where she gets uh, some high-level information about the, our climate or our uh, carbon footprint to the, as of today. Um, having said that, the data that is in this test system is obviously up to, uploaded a couple of times, so uh, it might not be accurate to our numbers uh, as we have them in production, but um, we wanted to show you this one where we could adapt it and, and reduce a few of the topics um, to limit it. Um, and what you see here is, um, first of all, our greenhouse gas emissions uh, on a total over the last three years and um, split it by the different scopes. And as you already see, and this is quite uh, uh, realistic to our numbers, that the scope three or the business travel emissions are our major topics that we have to cover with, except of uh, purchase goods and services, as mentioned, that we uh, still not have in the system, but we are planning to do so. And the solution obviously also allows to, uh, to manage that in there but uh, we have not yet analyzed all the uh, requirements uh, in here. <clears throat> and as a, the, the black uh, line here is a reference number for us. It's one of our goals that we want to achieve, which is 1.4 tons uh, carbon dioxide per uh, project member. And um, obviously um, also quite realistic uh, compared to the numbers is that uh, 2020 was uh, quite a good year for us due to unfortunately, um, 
um, uh, the um, uh, COVID crisis in, in respect to travel or business travel, obviously this was uh, clearly went down. But at least, uh, I mean, Annika has here a clear view on what is our key um, goals that we want to achieve and she can even scroll down you see some a balance car, a scorecard on the bottom where you see germany in compared to our global goals and um, she can even drill down here uh, onto different levels so for example she can select a specific year to get uh, an overview on how the carbon footprint developed over the different months in, in the course of uh, the system. And as you can see, obviously, May is a quite high number that might be not correct in this uh, context. So uh, yeah, there is lots of data that has been uploaded a couple of times. Um, yeah. When I scroll up, I can even uh, drill down even further. So I could obviously go into our uh, top contributors on the first level uh, by business line. So I see the different businesses that we have. And um, I have here also our offices and maybe our top engagements or top customers that are behind it. And I can select here again a, a, uh, a business line and then obviously uh, go down into a specific what are the top 10 or top five uh, engagements that contribute. I could even go into those uh, um, engagements. I could also select a specific year, etc. There's a few more topics. What I would like to highlight with you is maybe one other area, which is our business travel overview. Um, because as I said, business travel is so important to us. We want to manage this specifically. And this dashboard allows um, Annika already to validate some of our travel policies and travel policy topics around it. On, on the high level, she again gets an overview of the total um, emissions over the last three years broken down by the different travel types or uh, travel elements. Um, and so you can see obviously air travel is quite an important topic for us, um, as Nikolai mentioned before. Again, I have here the different businesses. I can select a, a fiscal year if I want to, to drill down. Uh, we get some more measures on KPIs that we have here, which I would like to skip right now for the moment. Um, but also I have here, for example, a, a breakdown on specific customers again. And I can see here even, um, you know, what is external and internal. And for example, you see here a customer where we have a lot of internal travel, something we, Annika would most likely dig in because this is something we would like to prevent as much as possible. As Nikolai said before, we, um, we encourage our people uh, to um, leverage more and more inter um, virtual sessions to do so. And, and even as Nikolai said, um, reduce um, the number of global meetings or team meetings uh, to a minimum. I can also uh, drill down into cabin classes in, your, in our flights. Uh, so for example, if how many times we fly in business and economy, because also this is a quite important factor where we can easily reduce our carbon footprint by uh, encourage our people to fly um, economy class except of business class. Um, and here again, you see some details and I can also select here maybe a specific business line if I want to. Uh, etc. Yeah, maybe to, to drill down on the bottom just to see some other areas. On here, I see even that's another topic that we uh, try to, uh, another topic in our travel policy of today, where we limit uh, short distance flights. So in here, you would, Annika would see uh, the different connections that we still fly internally uh, on short distance. And she could obviously follow up here. Obviously, there is a lot of uh, um, data from previous years, right? So I still can also um, um, limit down and select here. So and this obviously is a dashboard that gives a consolidated view on all the KPIs we obviously are interested in. And clearly, this is something which develops and um, is not completed yet, but um, where we, <coughs> sorry, where we, um, 
wanting to make sure that the uh, clear view of all the data that gets automatically uploaded from the system, but also data that we manually enter and record from different office uh, locations, etc. With this, I would give uh, back uh, uh, to uh, Christoph on here. And uh, just as a quick side note, we will stop uh, uh, switch uh, screening here. So I would quickly stop and Christoph will take over. Thank you, Mike. Um, just switching and going to the right screen. So um, we have uh, here seen uh, the dashboards uh, with the aggregated data view, but let's take a look at the underlying data, which basically is the basis for all this um, dashboard views. Um, Annika uses the carbon footprint tab um, to understand where she is with uh, the audit of her various types of assets. The carbon footprint record basically represents the energy consumption um, for an asset or business activity. And that could be a commercial building, data center facility, a fleet vehicle, um, air or ground travel and so on, usually for a calendar year or fiscal year. And you can aggregate multiple assets over time. Uh, over a time period you basically choose. So uh, Annika can view the carbon footprint by asset type. Um, as you can see here, in this case, she is interested in, in reviewing the commercial building uh, assets. And in this list view, you can see that there is a little arrow shown here. Um, this is being flagged automatically by the system because um, there are actually inventory records listed against uh, a building, but there's uh, no energy consumption. So there is a lot of checks built in in terms of um, highlighting and flagging areas we need to re review and uh, need to analyze a little bit further. But um, in this case, Annika uh, first wants to take a look at another building uh, in Cologne and especially the one in Magnusstraße. As you can see here, the, uh, that building or that asset actually in terms of uh, the data collection type which is being listed is marked as manual instead of automatic. So there are a lot of um, buildings where actually the um, energy records and the energy data is coming automatically from the energy provider and being uploaded automatically into the system uh, against these uh, carbon footprint records. But for this building, actually, the, the uh, data collection uh, needs to be uh, done manually. So let's take a look at, at this data in a little bit more detail. Uh, this record aggregates basically all the relevant uh, collection data over the last fiscal year for this building, as you can see here uh, on, the, on the right side in this little chart. It contains details about um, the, the asset itself, about the building, um, as well as um, where um, we are currently in the carbon footprinting journey. Uh, for this specific asset. So right now we are still on the data collection. Uh, if that would have been done, uh, we would uh, move it further um, to probably um, take a look at if there's any data missing to interpolate that, uh, validate the data, and then finally um, move it into the audit process. Um, further down on this record, um, the Sustainability Cloud has automatically calculated uh, all the scope 1, uh, 2 and 3 of greenhouse uh, gas emissions. The uh, carbon inventory calculations are automated based on the greenhouse gas protocol corporate accounting and reporting standards. So all the relevant reference data is already preloaded into uh, Sustainability Cloud. So Annika no longer uh, has to check calculation accuracy uh, in complex uh, spreadsheet driven inventories. So we still are in the data collection phase for this um, carbon footprint. As you can see, um, again from the chart on the right, there, there is data missing for the last fiscal quarter um, from Deloitte's uh, fiscal year, which ends um, May 31st. So it's time to get the uh, meter reading initiated. And for this building, actually, when we look at the um, uh, data for this building, uh, you can see that there are actually two different electric meters existing where we need to um, ask the facility manager to manually uh, collect this data. So let's initiate that, uh, let's initiate that uh, by uh, going to that building and basically, now I need to move my um, window a little bit beside. Um, let's initiate the um, collection process uh, by clicking that open new collection button and that will actually trigger a process um, which um, will create a notification for the facility manager as well as creating the necessary uh, data records where the facility manager then can uh, register uh, the meter readings against that. So let me take a quick look into um, the um, application uh, from the viewpoint from uh, Thomas uh, Colonna. He receives on the mobile phone, as you can see here, 
um, the uh, notification which uh, was initiated by Annika or by Annika's process uh, that he needs to uh, take the electric meter readings in Cologne and Magnusstrasse and uh, by doing that I can immediately jump into um, the uh, Salesforce Sustainability Cloud uh, mobile app um, and can as uh, Thomas Colonia now um, enter um, the data record and I need to um, take the picture of the meter actually which I have printed out here to uh, collect the, the right uh, value uh, for this reading. So it, it loads the data, it loads the necessary records uh, which he needs to fill in um, and apologies for my uh, poor um, um, connection here uh, I have on the internet but uh, we will see that in a second. So I can now enter the meter reading which is in this case uh, it needs to be 4, uh, 8, 3, 4, 5, um, dot 5 and I can uh, then um, not only take the meter reading but I can also immediately upload a photo of that meter. So I'm going to take a photo of my um, paper electric meter uh, and I can upload this. Um, this is important for audit purposes. So whenever we go into the phase for external audit, all the necessary data, all the necessary information are actually available at the fingertips for the auditors in order to validate the data. And this is not only for um, these pictures from, from meters, but also from, uh, for invoices um, which are uploaded into the system um, for energy, uh, from the energy provider. So we um, created this record so I sorry I did something wrong I forgot actually to um, hit the finish button apologies for that so let's quickly redo that again unfortunately I have to quickly take another photo upload that again and then we can finish the process and take a look again uh, how that actually ends up in the system and how Annika can then validate that this uh, has been done. So I forgot to finish, uh, click the finish button here um, and this ends the process for uh, this first meter reading. The important uh, information uh, which is now you should notice is that we have uh, further down in the screen for this meter reading um, we, we have taken the meter reading uh, today, I think is the, what is it, the, the 11th of June. Uh, the fiscal year ended actually uh, 31st of May, so um, the 31st May data would actually be relevant to go into the reporting and um, the system automatically calculates that projected uh, counter reading for me uh, based on the time when I do the, the meter reading and uh, gives me the indication here and this is actually the value which would go, go into the calculation um, reflecting uh, the uh, meter reading at the end of actually the last fiscal quarter which is relevant. So uh, let's take a look back into um, the system from Annika's point of view. Um, when we go um, again into the uh, chart here for the carbon footprint um, record for this building, for this asset and just um, um, refresh uh, the data, refresh the, the chart, you can see here the, the first meter reading, the second meter re reading is still missing so that would add uh, the additional um, consumption data here. The important thing is again we took the electric meter reading which is then automatically based on the reference data calculated uh, for us and for Annika uh, to go into all the reporting parts uh, in here. Um, but let's take a look at the last step. Um, how does that look like for, from the point of view from an engagement manager? And Mike, um, why don't you walk us through this part? Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, um, um, Christoph. So if we maybe uh, look from here, um, as I said before, we have um, embedded this solution or installed the sustainability cloud solution into our um, uh, um, into our CRM application. So every person within our um, CRM or in our sales teams have access or in our engagement teams have access to this. And from here, they could obviously drill down to a opportunity from an account. And in the opportunity uh, or in this engagement, you will see this is in a stage where we are delivering currently. So it's a project we have one, where we have uh, team members that are uh, delivering today. 
And um, I, as an engagement manager or as an engagement partner, as so responsible for a project, I can select our sustainability tab, which gives direct him directly into a, um, a dashboard that gives him some insights about this specific engagement. And uh, you see on the, on the bottom, there is again a deviation of the uh, scope three emissions specifically for this uh, um, project over the, from the start of the project uh, to, to today, as well as an outlook, as you see, there is a forecast that we calculate based on the um, uh, previous work. And you see some engagement characteristics on the left, which says huh, how many team members we have, how many offices from our side are involved, how many different uh, account locations or customer locations we have. That's just some high level information. More important, I think, is if you look into the, uh, some other metrics underneath, where we say um, how, many, uh, um, uh, how many minutes we travel in average, how many uh, uh, stays overnight do we have. Because obviously, uh, if we travel less often, but stay more often, obviously this will um, still allow us to deliver this, the project at the same quality. So if we are, for example, every three weeks on site, a full week, uh, and then are delivering uh, two weeks off site, um, which um, reduces our travel massively. So these are some indications that we have of today to give a engagement manager an insight about. What we have seen is in the discussion that the um, engagement managers still have some challenges to get a feeling of where are we with this, uh, uh, so what does it count or how, um, how big is the impact of this project. And what we have made, started with is some of those criteria like you see on the right hand side with this small little icon um, of a, a person. We obviously calculate the um, um, emissions of this project, of a, uh, an average project member into a, um, uh, compare it to a general uh, German citizen here in, in Germany per year. And obviously if you select a year as uh, Christoph just did, you see that it obviously updates and gives you a feeling of, um, yeah, I mean, in this case, it's 20, let's say about 18% um, uh, an average team member generates, and that's what we need to keep in mind. On top, right, I mean, he's also an average German person, you know, an average per German uh, citizen. And on top of this, right, he produces obviously 20% more because of this project. Yeah. Um, and I think this is something which definitely should alert us. Um, and uh, so, but nevertheless, having said that, what we are currently working upon is uh, getting a feeling of how can we help them to get a grip or a, a feeling of how they can influence and on the other hand how they um, how big the measure the, the, the measure is and um, having said that what we are trying to, to do right now is um, we are planning uh, areas where we prepare e-learnings for our um, um, engagement managers engagement partners project members etc and maybe, uh, Christoph, if we switch to our slides again, uh, I would like to take you quickly on the journey what we talk about. Um, so we are currently in a situation where we try to empower our people with e-learnings, but also to challenge them. And just to give you a quick outlook, what we already uh, starting with and what the solution also supports us with is, it provides a, a platform where you can already provide users or your uh, team with uh, e-learning modules, which they can run on their mobile phone or on their um, on, on, on web screen when they are on the, on the go. And um, we already started to develop numerous different e-learning e-learnings to them. For example, like why is this important, right? To ensure we need to educate the people, what is it about? And on the other hand, um, we also have um, some, some more details like how to use the dashboard, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and also uh, to educate them on what can I do personally or what can, um, can I do when I'm an engagement manager? What are typical um, uh, initiatives to do so? And this is something what we are trying to uh, start now to um, um, roll this out to the users that they really get get onboarded on themselves. 
And on top of this, and what I explained to you before already, and maybe we go to the next part, um, we also think about um, to motivate stakeholders by uh, engage with them. So um, either we obviously um, think about uh, recommending uh, specific actions in the dashboard, as we discussed before, but we also, when we benchmark projects, uh, would like to engage with them in a, in a concept like here, where we see pink retail is uh, above average in their carbon footprint compared to other projects in this category, right? So category means for us, um, uh, what percentage of inter international work do we have? Um, is it the same type of project? Is it the same business line? So there are some categories that we match them, what size of project it is. And in this category, we benchmark them, so we prepared. And in this case, we, we would like to motivate rather than control the people. And motivating means in this example, we, we, we identify this alert and we have some recommendations for the engagement partner or manager. And we send him an email um, out of the system, out of the sustainability solution, where we would like to give him a, a small team event incentive he can leverage um, when he obviously tries to achieve or follow some of the recommendations to reduce the carbon footprint of this project. Now, having said that, uh, I mean, this is what we, what we are at and uh, clearly, um, as you have seen, there are a few challenges that we have to cover. Um, on the one end, data, and, and on the other end, motivating people. But let's be clear, right? I mean, sustainability is much more than uh, a carbon footprint. And also, even to manage a carbon footprint, it requires a strategy, it needs uh, um, um, financial KPIs, etc. So there is a by far broader initiative that we need to drive. So I would like to hand over to Lars and here to give you a more bigger insight what we do and how we support our clients to empower their um, climate strategy. Thank you, Mike. Uh, great. Um, and, and thanks for the, uh, for the introduction. Um, this is a really good example you've shown, uh, you showed <clears throat> when it comes to, um, to sustainability. It's not just about um, it's not just about, let's say, that sustainability is a minor topic of the organization, um, but it's even more, it's about, you said it before, it's about creating awareness, it's about embedding sustainability within your environment, within your organization, um, within your value change, and also um, communicating accordingly. But what actually is sustainability about? When we talk about sustainability, and Mike, you said it before, <clears throat> it's not just about carbon footprint, etc. It's not just about environmental topics uh, such as climate change, pollution, uh, or water consumption. It's also about, let's say, biodiversity. And there are other topics as well. For instance, when there are social topics, um, probably you are aware, a couple of hours ago, um, the German Bundestag passed uh, the, the, the supply chain law um, um, and, and and this actually tells us that uh, corporations and almost all corporations are obliged to be, let's say, sustainable in terms of overviewing their supply chains when it comes to human rights and uh, working conditions. Um, another topic for social uh, for social impact is health or, or diversity. And then there's the governance topic, which is when it comes to sustainable energy or when it comes to circular economy, um, so um, uh, the products alongside your value chain. When we're actually talking to our clients, um, there are, in principle, four major challenges they are facing. The first one is strategy and governance. It's, I would call it the classical, um, the classical topic. It's about defining, let's say, your ESG strategy um, and uh, deriving measures and implementing these measures within your organization. So this might be so, such topics as um, um, uh, so sustainability risk assessments, uh, materiality assessments. How do I actually define or um, um, identify the KPIs which are important to me and which I want to report? So. Is it just, let's say, waste and uh, emissions topics, or is it also social topics, etc.? 
Then there's the second pillar, and this is um, something which comes along when we come to reporting and assurance. Um, we are, most companies, many companies are obliged to, um, uh, to report on, to uh, report on their financial, uh, non-financial um, uh, reporting uh, for financial information. And there it is quite important um, how, to, how to do this, how to support the clients that they are really issuing um, and reporting the right information. So do they really present fairly what is um, uh, what, uh, what the current status is about. That's one thing. And the second thing is how do we assure that and, and, um, uh, and uh, um, audit those kind of reports. The third one, and this is, I think, the most important one when, when there's a look uh, into the future, and this is actually something Mike and, and Christoph, you were, were talking about, and this was just one example. It's about operations and products. It's, let's say, about embedding sustainability across the entire value chain, including your suppliers, the operations, products, employees. It's about not that sustainability is going to be implemented within our organizational processes. No, it's another way around. It's about that sustainability will probably, and I'm, I'm sure it will, change or trigger transformation of the entire organization. This might be something like, okay, the procurement processes might be adapted to sustainability. Also the sales processes, such as we have seen a couple of minutes ago, the IT processes, etc. And quite important is I had a discussion a couple of days ago with one of my with one of my clients and they said, okay, well, and they are per se selling sustainable products, but the potential customers saying, okay, well, put yourself on ESG ratings and, and, and achieve a certain score, uh, otherwise we won't, or it will be more difficult to consider you for, um, uh, for RFPs and for tenders. So this actually shows that this is not something only for, um, let's say, um, um, bad companies or not green companies, but it affects all, all the companies all over the world. And uh, although they are already, let's say, having a sustainable touch. Operations and products and this all and sustainability um, is not for free, that's sure. And it will cost some money the, um, to follow, let's say, uh, your own agenda and to finance your sustainability transformation. And that is what you see on the last pillar, financing sustainability. It's about um, issuing bonds and supporting to issue bonds. And uh, it's about um, uh, discussing and uh, communicating with um, your investors, with ESG rating agencies, etc. And also about incentives. So incentivating let's say, senior manager to behave even more sustainable and to, let's say, push the sustainability agenda even more. So these are actually the, uh, the core topics, uh, what we see currently at the market. And this is not just something which is done in Germany. And as you probably imagine, um, uh, most companies are global. And if you, let's say, implement or define an ESG strategy in Germany, you need to implement the measures worldwide. And then we go to the next slide. There we are. And um, this is actually something we're saying as well. So um, our clients ask us, okay, well, you, you, we define here, for instance, in Germany, what we need to do, but implementation is another thing. Awareness is another thing. The operation is another thing. So this is the design is easy, but the operations is becoming more and more difficult and is difficult. And that is why um, uh, we have, let's say, more than 1,600 local experts globally supporting our clients to implement, let's say, the sustainability measures locally, talking the same language uh, from a cultural perspective and from a language perspective. And um, that's what we do, and um, I think now it's time for uh, your questions. And I'm happy to uh, to and looking forward to the to the discussion. And I think I hand over to 
yeah there we go exactly yeah maybe i take the first question that uh, came in um, it was obviously the question what are the challenges or the main challenges that we had in our implementation and i think i already mentioned a few before but maybe just revisit them quickly again i think Obviously, collecting all the different data and um, <clears throat> if you think of such solutions, if we take this a little bit broader to clients, um, when you have um, many different data sources, where you even have data sources about purchased goods and services, where you have to embed your suppliers or any other topics, where you have maybe uh, uh, locations or protection plans all over the, the world and not all of them are manually, uh, sorry, automatically connected where you get all the information. <clears throat> I think it is a, an, an important topic on the one hand really to analyze what are the important uh, data sources that we need, what are the key mission types that we have to manage to get a clear picture on where can we impact or um, uh, drive um, um, our carbon footprint. On the other hand is obviously how do we motivate the people, right? How do we educate them? I mean, as a production manager somewhere in Brazil, uh, I mean, he, I'm not quite interested to maintain this information, right? I have a different business goal and business uh, uh, KPIs I'm measured upon. So we need to make this very easy for them. Uh, um, and on the other hand, we need to remind them, we need to, uh, we need to have a clear view on what is missing, what is still uh, uploaded. And also, I think we, we have these challenges that we have uh, data in all sorts of different uh, um, uh, um, measures around the world um, that we need to upload, including uh, to integrate the different data sources. So it could be a quite heavy initiative, literally, right? Um, and, and I think that is, that's why it is important to have a solution like this, which is globally available, which is um, in the cloud and can be easily accessed um, from every every site that you have. Um, and having said that, data collection, etc., is the one end, and I think the other one is really empowering people. Um, that's what we had because empowering more in the sense of understanding what it means, right? Understanding the, the complexity or understanding what is their specific impact, um, and then really develop out of this. KPIs, incentive systems, that we obviously give them direction in which direction we want to go to. Um, and then, I mean, clearly, as in, in man, many other projects, um, it needs a strong sponsorship uh, from executive. And we are really happy that we have Nikolai here, um, as well as our COO, um, that supports us on here to really drive this. And um, yeah. Clearly, in a large organization as we are, uh, this takes time uh, to get all the um, um, the agreements and uh, formal topics on the road. Um, but nevertheless, we are quite happy that we have succeeded to deliver this um, in a very short time. Obviously. Yeah. Next question, Eva. I'm not sure which one we have. I think there's one in the chat as well. Uh, it's about scope three emissions for a consulting company like us. So what are the scope three emissions for a consulting company like us? Do we currently consider the CO2 emissions that derive from our consulting solutions as our scope three emissions? If we suggest a company to use disposal plastic or fossil fuel based solutions, do we count the emissions as our scope three emission? Thank you. Um, yeah, well, uh, this is um, not, not an easy task, to be honest. Um, uh, what we often see in the banking sector, um, uh, that this is going to be done, for instance, when we are issuing, let's say, products or assets uh, which are sold. Um, we are currently not doing this, let's say, in the consultancy business, um, because that's uh, an easy, uh, easy reason. It's uh, currently so, um, uh, let's say, complex and 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 um, and uh, to to calculate and uh, these these kind of emissions and also the availability of the data is quite hard to get. So, but what we are doing in the in the uh, in our sustainability projects and on our projects uh, at all is to take let's say sustainability into account um, and, um, and 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 discussing with clients. Okay, well, what we do. Um, 
um, advice, is this also an, let's say, sustainable advice, or is it, doesn't it take care about sustainability? But this is, again, and this is quite important, uh, Nikolai said that, and, and Mike said that, it's about awareness as well. We are more than almost 400,000 uh, employees, and um, advising our clients also when it comes to, um, to, to, to ordinary projects on sustainability topics, we need to have awareness. Uh, otherwise, this won't work. And I think this is one of the, uh, of the biggest tasks we have, um, that everyone is aware that sustainability is an, is an important topic. Um, and not just ending at Deloitte, but also for our direct and indirect, let's say, clients. Maybe at this stage, uh, Christoph, I have seen there's also a few questions to you. Maybe you can pick one of them. Currently um, not seeing the chat, unfortunately. Um, so, so there's, maybe I can just take one. Uh, there is one question uh, about the cost or the license cost uh, of this solution. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit on, on here. <coughs> so the, yeah, um, the, 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 the cost of the solution right now is, um, um, a license-based fee. The, the, the solution is based on the Salesforce platform, which um, gives you um, the flexibility to be uh, globally available, um, easy to deploy as a cloud solution. Um, because it's based on the Salesforce platform, um, it's it's really easy to adapt it to specific needs you have. And, and Mike, you have shown uh, how you uh, integrate that into um, uh, your uh, core um, system in order to manage opportunities uh, to, to uh, create this context and, and feed that information back. Um, but it's a, it's a, a license-based fee and I'm happy to um, uh, go into a little bit more detail offline around uh, how we price that and how, how uh, that is actually um, uh, being, um, being valued on, on the licensing. Okay. Then um, there is uh, also a question regarding, um, we mentioned um, that we want to go net zero, um, but um, there's also the question, are we considering to go beyond that, um, obviously to net positive impact into the future? Not sure if Lars, if you have more. Yeah, yeah so, so what we did, and I think Nicola said that um, uh, in the very beginning, so what we committed to is um, to, to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 of our own operations and uh, that's ahead of the 2050 timeline from uh, the Paris Agreement. Um, but um, uh, the, I'm sure there will be more in the, in, in the near future after 2030, but the, the commitment is being net zero, um, net zero um, uh, uh, by 2030. All right. Then um, there is another question um, uh, to you, Christoph. Um, are there any requirements to use the uh, Salesforce Sustainability Cloud? For example, um, if there is a prerequisite to uh, buy some of the, I guess, CRM solutions here, it says other Salesforce Clouds um, no, this is a prerequisite. <laughs> no, it's absolutely not a prerequisite. Of course, I would love to see <laughs> that happen, but no, it's it's not. It's it's uh, um, again based on the Salesforce platform, which can be um, used totally uh, independent from all the other products like Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, uh, Marketing Cloud, etc. Um, you can you can create the link as you as we have shown in the demo, but uh, that is not not necessary. So you can do all the um, data collection, all the carbon footprint. Um, uh, data collection um, totally independent from whatever you use uh, else from, from Salesforce and do all the reporting and all the analysis um, based on that in, in the sustainability uh, cloud product itself not, not connected to um, it is connected to the Salesforce platform but not to the other products out of the box yeah um, I just quickly see we have answered a few of the questions um, already uh, during the course of the situation here. 
of the session. So there was the question if we will share slides after the session. So the session is recorded and uh, we will distribute the recording afterwards. So uh, you should be able to um, revisit the information from here. Um, yeah, and we will obviously um, um, provide the recording on the website where you have registered. So you will find the information there again. Yeah, any, I'm not sure if there's any other questions. I don't see anything else. I mean, I just uh, would say uh, thank you very much for your time Friday afternoon. It was a, a, a pleasure, obviously, to in, explain a lot about our challenges and our situation. And um, I would say let's uh, let's get started together, right? Let's get started to uh, influence other customers, other uh, people in our environment, other companies, and obviously start to um, contribute that the future is more going to be a two degree uh, increase rather than a five degree increase. World. Thank you very much. Have a great day and uh, enjoy. Thank you.